Welcome to my third class about reinforcement learning. After having defined Markov decision processes in the previous class, today we will see about dynamic programming processes. So to introduce dynamic programming, I need one mathematical object that is very important, which is the value of being in a particular state given a current policy. So imagine the, the, my MDP is this maze where each cell corresponds to a state and each arrow corresponds to an action. So here I have defined a deterministic policy. The value function of that particular policy tells me how good it is to be in a particular state and following the corresponding f policy. So for instance here, being there is worth 1 because you get the cheese, but being there is worth 0 0.9 because if you are here and you just follow this action, you will end up with the cheese. And the discount factor gamma equals 0 0.9 explains that the value here is not 1. And so on and so on. So you can imagine what's the value of being here because you have to perform a few steps before you get to the cheese by following that particular policy. Okay? And a different notion than with respect to value function is the action value function. That's very similar to the value function, but instead of having just one value per state, you have one value per state action pair. So for instance, if you are in state E0, for instance there, let, let's imagine that this is E0, uh, doing action A0 might be worth that value, A1 might be worth that value, etc. So what does this mean? In fact, this is the value of performing the particular action in the particular state, and then following the policy pi associated to this action value function. Okay. Uh, so the idea is that a value function is a vector where you have one value per state, whereas the action value function is a matrix that gives you one value per state and action pair. Okay. Uh, most dynamic programming and reinforcement learning algorithm uh, work either with the value function or the action value function. Okay. In the remainder, I will focus on using just the value function because this is simpler and it, in many cases this is trivial to transpose the algorithms to action value functions. So how can we compute these value functions and action value functions? Let's focus on the value first. So imagine you have an agent which is in S0, it performs A0, it, then it's in S1, etc, etc. So it follows this Markov chain. Okay. What's the value of being in S1? By definition, this is R1 plus gamma times R2 plus gamma squared times R3, etc, etc. Okay? And now what's the value of being in S0? That's R0 plus gamma times R1 plus gamma squared times R2 plus gamma to the power of R3, etc, etc. So if you think of it, in fact, you can say that the value of being in S0 is R0 plus gamma times the value of S1. That's the recursive relationship that we have here. Okay, and this recursive relationship it has it is at the basis of all dynamic programming and reinforcement learning computations. Now, how do you generalize this computation to the case where your agent is moving in a stochastic Markov decision process? So, for instance, if the, your agent is in S zero and it takes a one, the transition is deterministic, so that's exactly the same as before. The value will be the reward for taking action A1 plus gamma times the value of S3. But if your agent takes action A0, okay, the value will be R0 plus gamma times the probability of being in S1 times the value of S1 plus the probability of being in S2 times the value of S2. So the more general formula is here. The value of being in a state S is the reward for being in that state and performing a particular action, plus gamma times the sum over the different probabilities of moving to a particular next state S prime and times the value of that state S prime. That's the general Markov um, sorry, the general Bellman equation in the deterministic policy case. And if the policy gets stochastic, then you have to take into account the probability of performing A0 and the probability of performing A1 in your stochastic policy. The formula gets a little more involved. So you have the sum over the actions of the probability of taking this action uh, times 
the same calculation for each uh, individual action. I won't go into the detail here. So how can you use these ideas in practice? Well, as you have probably understood, if you can compute the value of S0 given the value of S1, it might be a good idea to consider the value of the last state and to propagate backwards to the value of the very initial states. Okay, that's a way to do so. So just by iterating these formulas over the state space, you may compute the value function over the whole state space. The first algorithm that does this is called value iteration. I will first present it to you in practice and then we will just have a look at the maths that are behind. So how does value iteration work in practice? So here you have a reward that is worth one. So let's imagine that I will go through all states and in each state I will perform this computation that propagates the value according to Bellman equation. So here What's the value of being here? That's the value of being here times gamma plus the reward for moving here. But the value of being here is zero. So zero times gamma is still zero plus the reward which is also zero and this value keeps zero. So I am performing computations here but everything keeps zero. The only place where it does not keep zero is here because here you will get the value of for moving here which is zero plus gamma 0.9 times the value of being here which is 1. Okay, so you get 0.9. So you propagate these values all over the state and after one iteration what you get is that. Then you perform a new iteration. What hap what's happening? Well, the value for being here is no gamma times the value for being here. So that's gamma times that, that 0.9 times 0.9. So that's 0.81. Okay and so on. Here you will get 0 0.729 that I have um, approximated and so on and so on and you can see that after performing this computation over the whole state space enough number of times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 after 9 iterations I will get the value for being in any cell of the maze Okay. And from those values, I can determine uh, an optimal policy just by following the steepest uh, gradient ascent. So that's what you get. Okay. If you move from here to here and then etc. etc., you are following the optimal policy just by following the steepest gradient ascent. Okay. That's value iteration. That's very, very simple to do in practice. Now let's have a look at a different algorithm which is called policy iteration. This one starts with uh, any policy. Here I have taken a somewhat random policy. Actually it is not so it is not so random because here you can recognize that I am still following the optimal policy. But here I have moved a little the arrow so that I get something different. What I can do first is get the value of following this policies. So I'm just using the the value estimation for that policy and at that's this is okay I get this okay you can see that if I am here I will get to the reward that's nice but if for instance I am here I will follow these arrows and I will end up here so I won't get any reward so the values of all these states are zero now that I know the value of my policy what can I do I can improve my policy by Noticing that, for instance, here I am taking this action, but taking this one would be better. Okay, so if in each cell I am trying to improve my policy by considering what's the steepest gradient descent, then I can make a few changes to my policy. So this is what I do here. I have to change here and here and here. And then I have a new policy. What can I do? I can compute the value function of this policy again. That's done here. Okay. And, and so on and so on. So I have changed this arrow from here to here and you, now you can see that, by, that because of other changes that I've done there, now I should turn the arrow back to that direction. So that is what I am doing here. I am also making a few changes here. A new iteration, I compute the values of that policy. That's what you get here. There is still a small improvement to be done here. And after four or five iterations, I get the optimal policy, which is a absolutely equivalent to the one that I add with value iterations. Okay, You can spot that I have made less iteration than with value iterations, but those iterations were more expensive because at each iteration I needed to evaluate each policy, which is an expensive process. Okay. 
so that's where, how it works in practice. I must say also that with these classes come labs, and in the first labs, what you will do is code for value iteration and policy iteration algorithms to have, so as to better understand them. Okay. Now I will just give you a word about the mathematics that, I beha that are behind, but I won't go into the details because that's not the way this uh, class is designed. So just a word to say that when you have a series where you compute the next value from the previous value by applying an operator, you can say that your series is converging somewhere if your operator is contractive. Okay? And here we have a series to compute the value function from applying an operator to a, the previous estimate of the value function. So we will define two operators. One is called the Bellman optimality operator, and that's this uh, operator that you we have already seen, which consists in recursively propagating the values. So you have the value at n plus 1 as a function of the value at n, and in fact, you can show that this particular operator is contractive if gamma is inferior to 1. Okay? And even more, you can show that it converges somewhere, and that somewhere corresponds to, to the optimal value function v star. Okay? Uh, so you get finally this equation that the optimal value function is the fixed point of the Bellman optimi optimality operator. And this defines value iteration mathematically. If you want to define policy iteration mathematically, this is a little more complicated. You need to define a different operator, which is called the Bellman operator, not the Bellman optimality operator, which consists in applying this. In this one, you add a max, and here the max is not there. And with this operator, you can compute the value function corresponding to a particular policy. So you can combine computing this value with policy evaluation plus policy improvement so as to follow the steepest gradient uh, ascent. And if you do both, then you can prove that this converges to optimal uh, value functions and then to optimal policies. Okay? You can find more details about this in uh, the book from Peterman. And that's it for this, this class about dynamic programming. And now we are ready to start studying reinforcement learning itself.